In this video, I'm going to tell you about the biggest social media marketing mistake tech companies make and how they can fix it. Hey guys, I'm Giovanni. You know, there was a time when technology companies believed in the approach of, if you build it, they will come. And that is, that the building the best products and services means that people are just going to buy them. But the harsh reality today is, is that the best technology doesn't always win the market share. One of the main reasons technology companies struggle to gain market share despite their superior products and services is because they're still trying to sell technology to technologists. And they haven't recognized the paradigm shift in decision making that's occurring in most technology industries today. This decision making paradigm shift is the continuing trend for companies to make technology decisions based upon goals and strategies for the business, not solely on technology plans. So the decision for the purchase of technology solutions and services has broadened to a team of decision makers beyond the technologists, often including business strategists, information directors, and operations executives. Or in the case of a small or even a mid-sized company, it could be a VP or the company owner. Unfortunately, too many technology companies rightly proud of their products and services continue to market to the audience that they're most comfortable communicating with, which obviously is other technologists. After all, these are often the users who get it and who understand the complexities of the technology and truly appreciate the innovative product features or service capabilities that are brought to bear with this service or solution. But the fact is, they're no longer the sole and often not even the primary decision maker when it comes to the acquisition of critical technology for their organization. And this is especially true if the technology solution must integrate with an overall company technology infrastructure. When a technology company fails to truly understand this need to focus their social media marketing beyond the traditional technology user, and of course this is assuming that they have social media as one of their marketing channels to begin with, they end up being in an uphill battle to be recognized and known to the true decision makers in the executive offices. Companies with superb technology that for years saw excellent growth while selling to highly technical users are now facing longer sales cycles and faltering sales revenues because purchase decisions are no longer being made in the isolated pockets within the technology labs and the developer pits. Because they're virtually unknown to the business executives within their customers, you know, they're perceived as one of the many vendors at a time when customers are looking to consolidate their business among fewer, more strategic suppliers, like companies that are seen as highly trusted business advisors versus just a vendor. The net result is that they're not gaining the traction and visibility on sites like LinkedIn and via business targeted Facebook groups that they need to in order to reach today's true business decision makers. Meanwhile, more savvy competitors are grabbing up the mind share of those decision makers because they're engaging audiences where their audiences are on social media. So let's talk about a few steps that you can take in order to avoid this mistake. Identify and profile today's true decision makers. Reevaluate and identify who today's true decision makers are in this new paradigm. Profile them in detail to examine their roles, their personal and business goals, their strategic objectives, and their influencers, you know, the sources of information that they go to for insights and perspective on potential solutions. I think you'd be shocked to find out how many of them are using social media in the decision making process. Create strategic message maps curated as stories and themes designed to communicate your most relevant and differentiated value proposition for your true decision makers. This should include your primary value proposition, strategic elevator pitches, supporting sales messages, and promotional theme messages, but the hard part here is that you need to do this without being salesy. This also means that your messaging must be broadened well beyond traditional technical features and benefits and communicate why your company and its products or services are most qualified to help solve the strategic business challenges your customers face today on mediums that are built to entertain. Your message map should be created for each target audience persona. This includes not just your decision makers, but also your key influencers. It's easy to overlook your influencers in your messaging efforts, but they can be extremely important advocates or barriers that directly impact purchase decisions. And lastly, you want to review your brand identity. Ensure that your brand identity is designed specifically to support your strategic messaging in a social media world. If your brand identity no longer supports your new strategic messaging given the paradigm shift in decision making, or if it just feels too stiff and corporate, then 
it might be time to have a look at it and revamp it. But be careful when examining the redesign of a brand identity. An update on your brand does not necessarily require the abandonment of your previous brand identity for the sake of a completely new look and feel. A rush to revitalize your brand too drastically can result in losing the equity that your brand has built up over the years. It may be best to implement changes in carefully planned stages so as not to fully abandon your previous company brand identity. If you don't have the skills in-house, get a professional with expertise in brand identity to assist. This is something that you need to get right. This is the new face of your company and skimping on budget here is not the place that you want to save a few dollars. I want to know what you think about these. Please leave me a comment with any questions or critiques. I check them on a daily basis and I'll be quick to get back to you with a response. Comments are one of the most effective ways that bloggers can increase their discoverability on YouTube, but it also helps me create the content that you want to see. Thank you so much for watching. I honestly do appreciate it. And I guess I'll see you in the next video.